Howdy folks, welcome back to Dark Souls 2, uh, Crown of the Old Iron Bling Bling. So today, it's out optional time. And I'm playing online, and I got these summoning signs, but those aren't the summoning signs of mere people. No, those are, the grammar is too accurate, the capitalization too consistent. No, no, those are AI people. And we'll check them out a little bit later, but... Okay. I alluded in the last video, this optional stuff kind of, uh, sucks souls. It sucks the soul right out of you and makes you all hollow and jet. See, like, right from the get-go, I'm already incredibly impatient to get through this. So there is, this is not a linear path, rather there are two kind of linear, but it's like a choose-your-own-adventure book for dicks. Okay, so as I want to do, gotta be obsessive, gotta look at every possible path, and it's rewarded with some useless garbage, but still. Like I said, it's crown of the old iron bling bling, and there's lots of bling to collect in this optional path. Now the error, the problem is taking time to collect all that stuff, the gate closed at the end. I want to run through that gate. So let's try that. Hopefully I transition this appropriately. I didn't. I'm sorry. Let's try this one more time. I'm trying to remember... Ah, yes, yes. I think you... I, I think... I reloaded the area because I think you have to do that in order to reset the uh, the switch. And you know what? It works, so therefore it must be correct. Now let's run. Oh, got a little too excited. Let it open and run! So hopefully your adaptability is high, and hopefully your fire resistance is decent. And then hopefully your lightning resist is kind of decent. I trust your character is not indecent in any capacity, because that would just make this harder. And these guys... These guys are dicks. They do a lot of just dick shit to you. But they have low poise, so if you are persistent, maybe if you have a quicker striking weapon than the one I am currently using, the Mara Greatsword. You might come into greater luck. So this is the path that most people probably do not take when they go through this terrible optional area. But it is good if you do, because it does allow you to be more methodical in dispatching the enemies and beating off those enemies. Because you have, in the words of Obi-Wan, you have the higher ground. So those Ashenites can't get to you. Whereas if you came from the below path, the Ashenites could get to you, and the lightning uh, buttholes would be chucking lightning butthole shit at you. Which you don't want. You don't want, frankly. I knew there was a dick in this room. These enemies are probably up there for... Well, no, they are the most annoying enemy of the DLC. No doubt. They can teleport, they can get behind you and backstab you. Gross. It's gross what they can do to you. And they can chuck lightning at you. And they're pretty fast. And they're furious. They are all things that you would not want in an enemy. All combined to one. Anyway. So, unnecessarily exploring every map square of the DLC. Don't ask me why. So we have a second gate sequence, which means, again, I gotta explore all these paths. Hopefully I remember to edit this one, right, guys? So by now, you should be pretty good with these Assin Knights. Assin Nine Knights. I probably already said that. I don't even care. I don't know why they're backing up and seem to be afraid of me now. And to think the mask got downgraded, imagine how graphically, imagine how f f feared they'd be if the graphically upgraded version of the mask was active. That's crazy. 
So explore the branching paths, which aren't branching paths. They're jail cells. And for your efforts, you're given some useless piles of garbage. You're given some sticks that you can't even set on fire because there's no fire nearby. You think I'm going to use one of my, like, 40 flame butterflies I probably have on that thing? I don't think so. Also, I can't fathom why you would even need a torch in this area. From Bloatware is pretty deliberate about item droppage. But why a torch? Anyway, back at the gate. I'm going to run through it and see what the end of the... Uh... Well, I don't want to say easier path, because if you get hit by one or two of those fireballs, the cell, the bars are going to close on you. And then you're going to have to go back to the uh, proper path. But if you come this way, this guy can't get you later. When you come from below... But really, what you should be doing is just... This is very similar to the optional area of the first DLC. It is a bit of a gauntlet. It's not all that fun. There's a kind of shit boss at the end of it that you don't really want to fight because, well, you'll see why. So it's really... You just run, run through it. I don't think there are any items in the area that are even worth your time. Unless you really like torches. And maybe you do. Maybe you like torch wood. Although the last season wasn't very good. Anyway. This is the end of the path less traveled. Of course you got your possessed armor dude with a big old bow. I'm not... How does, is the bow also possessed? Has anyone thought to question this? Or does he operate the bow using telekinesis? Using ash telekinesis? Are the arrows made of ash? Like, where does ash begin and physics begin? Where does ash end and physics begin? Is my question. Does the lore explain how the bow... Uh, are they... Do they have one? No, the... His arm of mist is holding the bow. But I've, I've held a bow before, and I don't think smoke could hold them. Personally. So taking this secondary route gives you also a range advantage. You know, ideally. Because, yeah. Jeez. So like I said, it's Probably a better idea just to brute force your way through the area and be done with it. Though doing that kind of gets problematic because you have to pause for that brief moment before you enter the door. That giant who's leaking fire out of his armpit is going to be right on your butt and you're going to have a, uh, a fire giant club butt problem. What is that club, by the way? It looks like a... Uh cactus? A stone cactus that he's wielding? Or like a plant? Kind of a closed Venus flytrap? I mean, usually it's like looking at a cumulonimbus cloud and thinking, what does your imagination say it is? There is no incorrect answer, guys. It's fine. So, I probably should have edited this a little more tightly, but it's important to share the experience of the tedium of this DLC. And I'm not gonna stop here, mind you. I am gonna show you the first path. I'm gonna show you, oh, I'm gonna give you options. Cause it's my job to show you this DLC well after a month it already came out and anybody watching this has already probably played it and beaten it off at this point and already knows everything I'm saying and it's just kind of nodding along or falling asleep. But y y y you gotta have options. It's important to have options. So there's a boss ahead, but let's get Steel Wield Lori and Rifter Swordsman Adel. 
And I would like to show this, which I don't believe I did in the first DLC, certainly not this one. Isn't that cute? No, it's not. Not cute. Not cute one bit. From not only gives their invaders human-like behavior, but he does the same thing with the dudes who help you out. Fantastic. Alright, so these guys are not particularly strong. You know, I'm doing 300 damage with my dex weapon, and they're just kind of barely hitting 100. Not only that, they're making everything more difficult by the nature of them existing. I forget what the formula is exactly. Oh, and also I'm being, uh... Is that me? Yeah. I'm being promised Walk of Peace out of my mind. That's another thing those clerics do, so what that does is it keeps you from rolling, I think. No, no, it makes you heavy. It makes you fat roll. Basically, it makes you weigh a ton of bricks. And that's just kind of irritating, especially in a place where you're likely going to die a number of times if you're going through this the first time. Unless you're like a pro or you're level 999 or something. The odds are you're going to die a little bit. And when you die a little bit, well, one, if you die a little bit, you can't summon the help. And then, I don't, I don't even know where I was going. The point is, this can be hard to rush through. If you are being promised Walk of Peace, Ed. Duh. A lot. Also, you know, if you get hit by a stray arrow, which is very likely, or a stray bolt of lightning, your resistance is down, the NPCs get in your way. Oh, there's another item I missed the first time through. Huh. What, uh, whose souls are those? Huh. Well, I guess I'll take them for myself. It's a, it's a little similar to the optional area from the first DLC. You go through a little spot, there's a place you can drop down, you do some more stuff. And then you, uh, and ideally, when you die a lot, you're probably just going to start charging through here. Which is uh, hazardous, especially when your health is getting gradually lower. But this is... Yes, this is the last area where that giant is at. You see him being promised walk of peace, slow... Then uh, you get Promise Walk of Peace, and then you try to roll past that shit, and you're probably not going to roll past that shit. So, here's what I would recommend. You let the NPCs do all the work here. But, since the NPCs are not particularly strong, I don't think, personally, they are very helpful against the boss, except serving as a distraction for you to get some cheap shots in. But if you want to take the noble route and fight the boss on your own... What you can do, first I want to get rid of this giant, because I'm afraid if he comes right after me, then I'll have a, uh, a giant, uh, a problem of fire. You could use those souls of the giant and make him, like, cry or something. Those are probably relatives of his that I have souls of. You know, you have to, like, you know, pour a 40 out or, you know, something. Alright, so now that we're relatively safe... Just dismiss the NPCs. Sorry, Lori. Sorry, Adel. You continue drifting. Then I send him out right with lightning up his back. This is back. Let's keep it tasteful. So, I'm for no particular reason putting on the Spell Quartz Ring plus three that increases your magic defense. And, okay. So, my first reaction, I remember this very well, because I had played this blind, not recording, but just playing it for fun. You can play games for fun sometimes, guys. You don't have to record everything you do. It's the true gamer experience, man. But I can replicate my reaction to seeing Smelter Demon when I walked in here. I think it was something like Ugh. Or maybe it was more like Ugh. It wasn't like a visceral like What? Are you fucking me? No, it was more like uh, disappointment 
with a sense of dread. Like, oh, this again. So if you died a lot to the first smelter demon, then this might actually not be much of a problem. But is what you would say. But there's a few minor things different about this demon of smelt. Okay. So first of all, he's glowing blue instead of red. That means instead of passive fire, he does passive magic damage. So you want to get your magic resist up. Different type of magic. And then the second thing, I guess the second thing kind of comprises two minor things. One, his timing is ever so slightly different. So if you're used to the timing from the first guy, you're used to rolling at certain times, getting your sword swings at certain times, or when he gets into his 1-2-3 combo, the timing is just a wee little bit different. His attacks are ever so slightly different. So that rhythm that you may have developed and that you're summoning your muscle memory for has a chance of getting disrupted. And then... Well, I guess the other little thing is that he, he just has a couple of different attacks, too, that you might not be prepared for. So the best thing I can come up with, besides getting hit and not rolling, is to, you know, patience, man. Patience. You could go in there and try to whale him in one, two, or three, or two or three times with a weapon, but gotta play it safe, man. Two-hand your sword, go with a poke single strong poke but not two pokes if you do two pokes you might not be ready to roll out of the way when he comes lunging at you one poke and then you're ready to literally roll huh that's how I recommend it but yeah I mean the optional fight in the first DLC was it, say what you like about it but it was kinda unique I guess I mean, it, that doesn't mean it was great, but it was different. I mean, this, I was just kind of like, uh. I mean, that's, that's the optimal thing. And then it was like, oh, I have to do this again? Oh, no. He's really no different than the smelter demon that you fought before. You get the same soul. I'm pretty sure the soul just adds another smelter demon soul to your inventory. There's no... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no different Smelter Demon lore. Where's the different lore? More like boar. And then, of course, you get the prize for going through the optional area, which in this case is a mask. So in Dark Souls 1, there were these uh, PvP builds called Giant Dads. And uh, this is kind of akin to something that a giant dad would wear, I suppose. But aside from that factor, it's just a mask version of the statues that you plug little cubes into. It's even got a little beard on it. That's great. So if you're looking to be fashionable... I mean, come on, you're not looking to be fashionable. If you've gotten this, if you've gotten the DLC... You've no doubt beating the game already. You're not looking for fashion. You're just biding your time until Bloodborne. That's the only reason you're playing any of these delicious. You just want to feel prepped for when you're eventually going to play something that's probably a lot better. That's what you keep telling yourself. It's the only reason you play this. You don't even care. You're just mindlessly going through... Not even think about what you're doing in the back of your mind. You're just be like, oh, Bloodborne's probably going to be great. Oh yeah, I'm playing Dark Souls DLC. I wonder why I'm doing that. Hmm. Well, that's why. That's why you're doing it. Okay? Don't lie to yourself. Any hoop. This is that optional item that I missed before. And I bet... Having to deal with these two enemies is going to yield an item that will prove that going back here, taking the time to go through this area once more to get to this one specific item, will have worked out in my favor. Or, oh, that could happen. 
Well, I hope you learned something. Never bring your hopes up for anything. You're always going to be disappointed, and you should just live your life in uh, eternal pessimism. Is the lesson I take away from that, and I hope you do too. So stay tuned for the next part, when we'll fight, I think. I think that's the next part. I think we'll fight a more interesting boss, maybe. No, no, that's two parts from now. Fuck!